Hello, math humans. We're going to do 3.3a today. We're finally going to get to the rules for differentiation. So our objectives are we're going to learn and manage some of the deri derivative rules. We're going to do a constant, a power, a constant multiple, and the sum and difference rules. So remember that we have been doing that the limit of a curve, or sorry, this derivative or the slope of a curve, whew, brain and mouth aren't working at the same speed, is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But there are times when that process is too hideous, and so very important mathematicians have developed a bunch of rules that we can use where we just have to learn a series of rules. So remember that these rules are going to be tools for our toolbox. And so sometimes we might use one set of tools and another times we will use another. But let's just start getting some of our rules. The derivative of a constant, and these are all on the sheet of formulas that I've given you, but it's nice to be able to talk through them. So the derivative of a constant is zero. And if you think about that, if I have a graph and I have a horizontal line, oops, spelled it wrong. If I have a horizontal line, well, the slope of that horizontal line is zero. Therefore, the slope of a constant is zero. The next one that we're going to get is called the power rule, and this is the one that I have been using when we have been doing work to check the limit definition of a derivative, and it looked like I knew some magic when in fact all I really knew was the power rule. So this says if I have x raised to a power, the power goes out front, the x stays, and then this power decreases by 1. All right, so the derivative of x raised to a power, the power goes out front, and then I decrease the power by 1. All right, the next one would be the constant multiple rule. And so in this one, if I have the derivative of c times, um, let me write c times u, Noticing that u is the variable, but since I have it like this, I'm going to write this as it's going to be because the power is 1. And if I move that power out front and then decreased that, that would be c. And I'm going to write 1 u to the 1 minus 1, oops, 1 minus 1, which would be 0. And so this would be 1. So the derivative of a constant times a variable is going to be c and then times the derivative of the variable, okay, just in case that it's not 1. But any time I have a constant out front, I still do my power rule, but then I also add that constant that's out front. Do notice that my variables have to match. So if in this case, I had a, der a derivative with respect to x of a u, so then that means it's going to be a constant and then whatever the derivative of the u would be. And so this is notation that we're going to have to get used to seeing. My sum and difference rule basically is like the limit of a sum or the limit of a difference. So if I have the derivative of u plus or minus v, then it's going to be the derivative d dx of u and then plus or minus the derivative of v. And so we're going to write that as du over dx and then dv over dx. Alrighty. So again, notice that I'm paying close attention to my derivatives, or sorry, my variables and making sure that they match. Okay. Alrighty. So those, I think, are the primary ones that we're going to touch today. Now we're just going to do some examples. Alrighty. So let's start with example number one. So in example number one, I want to find dp over dt if p is equal to t cubed plus 6t squared minus 5 thirds t plus 16. So in this case, 
<coughs> sorry, I have a lot of different things going on. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage each, that one should be four, each piece separately. So I'm going to write that P prime of T, variables are important. So notice this says I'm taking the derivative of P with respect to T. So on this side, here's my P, so this says P prime of T. On this one, I'm going to use that power rule. So I'm going to take the 3 out front, and then I'm going to have my t. 3 minus 1 would be 2, so that's going to be t squared. On this one, here's the 6. The derivative of a constant is the constant, right, when it's in front of a variable. The 2 is going to go out front. 2 minus 1 is 1. I have t to the 1. So when I take that one out front, it's going to be minus 5 thirds. Technically, I would have taken the one out front, and then this would be t to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. And remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. So if I just clean that up a little bit, I have 3t squared plus 12t, and then I'm going to have minus 5 thirds. <coughs> So again, remember when I'm taking a derivative and I'm using the power rule, the power goes out front and then the exponent decreases by 1. So much faster than if we had had to do that by the limit definition of a derivative. Woohoo! Alright, second example. So for example, number 2, I want, does the curve... y is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 have any horizontal tangents. All right, so the question is, does this curve have any horizontal tangents? Well, remember, a horizontal tangent means that the slope of the horizontal line is 0. So that would mean that f prime of x would have to equal 0. So let's take the derivative. So I'm going to do dy dx because I have a y. And I could have written f prime of x. That's OK, too. But I'm just getting us used to the notation. And now I'm going to take the derivative of each of the 1, 2, 3 terms using the power rule. So the 4 on the first one, the 4 goes out front. Here's the x. And 4 minus 1 is 3. And then here's the 2, here's the exponent 2, and then I'm going to do 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then I have plus the derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm going to get dy dx is equal to 4x cubed minus 4x to the 1. And then I'm going to set that equal to 0 because that was the situation that we were asked for. So this is the derivative, and I set it equal to 0. Well, now I'm going to solve by factoring. I'm going to take out a 4x, and I'm going to get x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So I know that x is equal to 0, and x equals plus or minus 1. So now the question was, does the curve have horizontal tangents? So I'm going to say f of x has horizontal tangents at x is equal to 0 and plus or minus 1. And I don't have my handy dandy grapher at home, but if you had graphed this in your calculator, it would look something kind of like this. And notice that it's a fourth degree, so often it looks like a w. And I have 1, 2, 3 horizontal tangents. Alrighty, so let's move on to our next example. So let's do example number 3. This is example 3, and I want to find f prime of x if I'm given that y equals 5 over 2x to the third. Alrighty, so sometimes when I do a derivative, as we learn more things to put in our toolbox, I need to assess what's going on. We haven't talked about what happens if there's something in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite it as y is equal to 5 halves, and I'm going to bring that x to the top, except I'm going to give it a negative exponent, because remember, laws of exponents, if I just make the exponent negative, it moves it to the numerator. 
Now I can take the derivative, so f prime of x is going to equal, here's the constant, the power goes out front, here's the x, and now it's a negative 3 minus 1, but unlike the other cases where this got smaller, so this is going to be a negative 15 over 2, x to the negative 4, and I would tell you not to leave negative exponents in your answers, so I would write that f prime of x is equal to a negative 15 over 2x to the fourth. Alrighty, so if you have something in the denominator, then it's probably easiest to just move it. Alright, one more. So the last example, if this is example number four, and I want to find the derivative of 7 over 3x to the negative 2. And again, we haven't talked about what, how I can manage a derivative of things in the denominator, so I need to rewrite it. So I'm going to rewrite that as the derivative of 7x. If it's a negative 2 in the bottom and I move it to the top, now it's going to be a 7x seven, seven squared over 3. Now when I take the derivative, here's the constant out front, Here's the power for the exponent, and then x, 2 minus 1 is 1, and so I would get that my derivative is going to equal 14 over 3 times x. So sometimes we just have to be a little bit careful about where and how we manage our math. All right, my dears, that's it for today. I have a bug keeping me company on our notes. See you soon.